Hey guys, welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to take a look at a feature called the BPDU Guard feature. Again, another feature that Cisco added to complement its other feature, feature or augment its other feature called PortFast. And personally, whenever I implement PortFast, I would always complement it with the BPDU Guard feature. Let me explain that to you guys. Uh, But before that, let's go through the outline and then I'll, I'll explain it. So we'll again go over what the port fast feature does and some problems that it can cause, some vulnerabilities that it can induce into your switched environment and how do I take care of that. And that's where the BPD guard feature comes in. We'll take a look at the config commands of it. We won't do the lab. We'll do the lab in the next video. All right. So first things first. What does the port fast feature do? We already talked about it, that it skips the listening and learning states, me, uh, leaving me vulnerable for, uh, for loops. But at the same time, you need to trust the administrator that he knows his users. He is not putting the port fast feature on a uh, port that's connected to a switch. He's doing it to an end device. So the administrator has gone in and configured these ports for port fast. So now these ports are forwarding immediately. They're not waiting for what? They're not waiting for the listening learning state. So there is a vulnerability that I can induce a loop. Now you might say, well, these ports are connected to PCs. Absolutely true. So what's the vulnerability over here? The vulnerability comes in from the fact that you still need to account for the human factor. This guy over here wants to connect his PC and his laptop to, uh, what do you call it? To the network, but he only has one cable connect connecting in, a port, uh, one single cable connecting in. So what he does is rather than putting a PC over here, he come, he brings a switch, connects in a switch over here and connects his PC over here and his laptop over here. And he sees another cable com coming into the network and says, oh, let me see if I can do this. As soon as it, he does that, there's a potential of a loop over here. All right. Because I have disabled the port fast feature over here, there's the potential of a loop happening because listening and learning is not happening. So the person can actually do that maybe in a, in a floor that is not managed by the administrator. It's away from the administrator. He doesn't know what's going on. He's, uh, the user has bought in a switch and he's caused this issue. Because this port over here again was configured as port fast, when he connected the switch over here, which is also connected over here, that caused a loop or could be potential for a loop. All right. So how do I protect myself? How does the administrator protect himself? <clears throat> the way he does that. So first of all, let's go back over here. So with port fast, the port comes up immediately. And what does it do? Leaves the network vulnerable for what? for loops. All right. So how do I protect myself? That's where the BPDU guard feature comes in. Let's talk about it and I'll show you. Now BPDUs are frames that are used by switch to switch communications. So the only device that could be sending BPDUs is another switch. Guess what? If a BPDU is received on a port that has been configured for what? Port fast that leaves you vulnerable or if you receive a BPD over here on a port that has been configured for port fast, there's something wrong because BPD only comes from a switch. It should not come on a port that has been configured for port fast because the administrator considers that port to be connected to an end device. All right. So what Cisco did was what they they introduced a feature known as BPD guard. What does the BPD guard do? If you have a port fast configuration enabled and you receive the BPDU on a port that has been configured for what? Port fast, based on this feature, it'll say, hey, this is a wrong thing. This, this, this should not happen. You should not be receiving a BPDU on a port that has been configured to be connecting to an end device, not to another switch. So what if the BPDU guard is enabled? 
as soon as it receives the first BPDU from that particular port, it will disable the port. This state of this error, uh, disable is called error disable. It was disabled because of an error. So as soon as, and if you enable this feature, as soon as the switch over here receives a BPDU where, sorry, receives a BPDU on a port that has been configured for port fast, it should not be receiving any BPDUs because BPDUs only come from switches. If it does receive a uh, BPDU on that port, it will disable the port. Immediately puts the port into a state known as error disabled. Okay, so that way if somebody has connected a uh, switch over here, you're still protected. The guy is going to call you, hey, listen, my port's not, my PC's not working. What did you do? Nothing. I didn't do anything. No, you did. You connected a switch over there. Good. Now you will see on the, if you look at your log message, it will tell you that you have received a BPDU on that particular port that has been enabled as a port fast port. All right. How do I configure the BPD guard feature? Very simple to do that. There's two different ways actually to do it. Number one, you can go onto the interface, you enable the port fast feature. I did that already. And then you can go ahead and say spanning tree BPD guard enable. On the same port that has been configured for port fast, enable the BPD guard feature on that as well. So always put these two commands hand in hand. So whenever you enable BP, uh, port fast, complement it with the BPD guard feature just in case somebody connects in a switch to a port that has been configured as a port fast port. BPD is a packet that only switches or frame that only switches forward. It should not be coming into a port that has been configured as port fast. Enable that feature so that port will be error disabled. All right. You can enable the port fast also by doing it globally. Now, there's, these are the two commands for that. If you wanted port fast to be enabled on all ports, that are non-trunking, basically any port that is not connected to another switch, which is a trunk, you can do it globally by saying spanning tree port fast default, port fast default. When you do that, any port that's not in trunking, so it doesn't have switch port mode trunk on it, it will enable port fast on it. And by doing the spanning tree port fast BPD guard default, you're also enabling the BPDU guard feature on those ports that have enabled port fast on it. So you can either do it globally or you can do it under the interface. Either way is fine. Whatever suits your particular requirement, you can do it. I showed you both ways to do it, globally or under the interface. Now, remember in the port fast video, I was talking about that you can also enable uh, port fast globally. This is the way to do it. The only problem that I have with this, because it does it for non-trunking ports, by default, all ports are non-trunking port except the, for the trunk ports. So tomorrow, if you go in and you configure a trunk on it, uh, I'd rather do it manually rather than allowing it to be done globally. All right? Port fast can cause issues, so it's better to go into the port and configure the port that you know for a fact is connected to an end device. That's the port that I want to enable port fast for. All right? You guys understand that now. So port fast, always complemented or augmented with the BPD guard feature to protect yourself just in case a person is trying to uh, connect a switch to a port that has been enabled for port fast. Hope you guys un uh, understood this. We'll actually be implementing this in the next video. Hope to see you over there. Thanks for watching again.